As I share with you what's going on, you will have to listen very carefully and without being judgmental in order to understand what they are thinking and experiencing. Find your own best way to connect. Some fathers like to take their sons fishing or to a sporting event. Others go on a quiet drive or work side by side in the yard. Some find their sons enjoy conversations at night just before going to bed. Do whatever works best for you. A one-on-one -on -one relationship should be a routine part of your stewardship with your sons. Every father needs at least one focused quality conversation with his sons every month, during which they talk about specific things such as school, friends, feelings, video games, text messaging, worthiness, faith, and testimony. Where or when this happens isn't nearly as important as the fact that it happens. And oh, how fathers need to listen. Remember, conversation where you do 90% of the talking is not a conversation. Use the word feel as often as you comfortably can in your discussions with your sons. Ask how you feel about what you're learning in that class. How do you feel about what your friend has said? Or how do you feel about your priesthood and about the Church? Don't think you have to try to fix or solve everything during these visits. Most of the time, the best thing you can do is just listen. Fathers who listen more than they talk find that their sons share more about what is really going on in their lives. Dads, listen to your sons. Second, pray with and for your sons. Give them priesthood blessings. A son who is worried about a big exam or a special event will surely benefit from a father's priesthood blessing. Occasions like the start of a new school year, a birthday, or as he begins to date may be in a very opportune time to call upon the Lord to bless your son. One-on-one -on -one prayer and a sharing of testimonies can draw you closer to each other as well as closer to the Lord. Now, I'm mindful that many of you fathers suffer heartache over sons who have strayed and are being captured by the world, just as Alma and Mosiah worried about their sons. Continue to do all you can to maintain strong family relationships. Never give up, even when fervent prayer in their behalf is all that you can do. These precious sons of yours are yours forever. Fathers, pray and bless your sons. Third, dare to have the big talks with your sons. You know what I mean. Talks about drugs and drinking, about the dangers of today's media, the Internet, cyber technologies, and pornography, and about priesthood worthiness, respect for girls, and moral cleanliness. While these should be in not the only subjects that you would talk about with your sons, please don't shy away from them. Your boys need counsel, guidance, and input on these subjects. As you talk about these very important matters, you will find that trust between you will flourish. I'm especially concerned that we communicate openly and clearly with our sons about sexual matters. Your sons are growing up in a world that openly embraces and flaunts early casual and thoughtless promiscuity. Your son simply cannot avoid the blatant sexual imagery, messages, and enticements that are all around them. Fathers and Church leaders need to have open and frequent discussions that teach and clarify how young men of the priesthood handle this issue. Be positive about how wonderful and beautiful physical intimacy can be when it happens within the bounds the Lord has set including temple covenants and commitments of eternal marriage. 
Studies show that the biggest deterrent to casual sexual activity is a wholesome attitude that connects such personal relationships with genuine commitment and mature love. Fathers, if you have not had this big talk with your sons, please do so, and do it soon. Now, in closing, I want to talk to all of you returned missionaries. Everything that I've said tonight also applies to you. Trust your Father. You can be closer to Him now than ever before, regardless of what your relationship was like before your mission. During the next few years, you will make the most important decisions of your life. Along with prayer to your Heavenly Father, advice from your earthly father can help you make those decisions concerning your education, career choice, and marriage. The important decision you will make in this life, which is probably the most important, is the decision to marry the right girl in the temple. While no one should rush this significant decision, all returned missionaries should be working on it. Be where you can meet the right kind of friends. Go on dates. Hanging out is not the way, nor is it enough. Courting seems to be a lost art. Rediscover it. It really works. Ask your fathers. They know. Do not drift to the ways of the world. Rather, maintain the dignity and the spirit you enjoyed on your mission. The Church will need your leadership in the future. And fathers, the three suggestions I made to you moments ago absolutely apply to your relationship with your returned missionary sons. Listen to them and connect with them in regular, focused conversation. Talk with them in depth about their feelings and desires. Pray with them and give them blessings as they face the important decisions in their future. I am grateful for my sons and my son-in-laws who have taught me so much, and I pray now that our Heavenly Father will bless all of us as fathers and sons, that we will honor our priesthood, and that we will love one another by making relationships with each other one of the great eternal priorities of our lives. And I so pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.